The next idea to represent documents as queries is based on language modeling. And you probably seen something about language models in NLP courses. Now here we will see how that can be used in information retrieval to match documents and queries and to rank documents for queries. Uh, first, what is a language model? Well, clearly it's a model of a language, right? A statistical language model is a distribution, probability distribution over sequences of words. And uh, for IR, we will mainly use distributions over single words, not sequences of words. But in general, if we have a sequence of length M, mean, meaning we have M words, uh, going one after another, then a language model is, uh, well, it assigns probability to this sequence. So whatever sequence of words we take, uh, a good language model gives us the probability for that sequence. So uh, for a unigram language model, which means um, we consider just single words, uh, and we the language model assigns probabilities to single words only, then what would be the probability of the sequence of such single words? Well, since our language model only deals with single words and assigns uh, probabilities to single words, it doesn't consider any dependency between these words. So these words are independent. And since these words are independent, then the probability of their sequence is just the product of separate probabilities. That's just an example. And that's actually the type of language model we will work with uh, in, in, in the course. Now for a bigram language model, a uh, language model assigns a probability to a word given a previous word. So it always uh, considers bigrams, gives probabilities of two words in a sequence. And in that case, what will be the probability of a sequence? It will be uh, the probability of the first word, second word given first, third given second, uh, fourth given third, and so on and so forth. Because now we need, um, Bigrams, uh, tuples of words. So these are just examples. And uh, to give you more uh, specific examples of unigram language models, let's say we have a vocabulary and the model one may give these probabilities to the terms and model two can give different probabilities to this, uh, to these words. Even if we, if, if you have a look at these terms, said likes that, uh, so, they are ranked differently according to different models. So um, likes is higher than said in language model two and likes is lower than said in language model one, just because these are two different models. So let's talk about unigram language models. Let's talk about how to match documents and queries. So uh, we represent documents as distributions, as distributions over words, and we will denote that as probability of a word or term given a model of a document. So a document is a distribution. For every term, there is a probability. Now, uh, how would we calculate this probability if we are given a document, just, just a written document uh, with many words, uh, words may occur multiple times. So let's say we are given a homepage of the University of Amsterdam. How can we calculate the probability of the word university in that document. Uh, given the unigram language model, that is all words are independent. So the, uh, the natural thing to do is the maximum likelihood estimation, and that will be term frequency, the number of times the word university occurs in the uh, page about the University of Amsterdam, this is term frequency, divided by the total number of terms in that document. So that's just a simple maximum likelihood uh, estimation, and that's very natural. So the number of uh, times we see a word in a document divided by the length of the document. Now, uh, this gives us a multinomial distribution over words. Multi so you probably have heard about binomial. You probably also heard about multinomial, but uh, just to compare in binomial, you toss a coin and you either have head or tail. In multinomial, you have many different outcomes of an experiment, not just two outcomes like tail and head, but you have as many outcomes of your experiment as there are words in the vocabulary. So you toss a many sided dice and there are as many sides as the words in the vocabulary and it shows how many times um, what, what word occurs and then you toss it many times and you see how many times a word occurs. So this is a multinomial distribution. 
Uh, and obviously, if the word doesn't occur in the vocabulary or in documents, then its uh, probability is zero because term frequency is zero. That's a limitation. We will address it later using smooth. But so far, basically, this is how you can represent a document, and this is how you represent a query. Now, how do we match two distributions? The first and most commonly used technique is uh, called query likelihood model, or QLM for short. Now, the QLM starts with the probability of a document given a query. Because we want to rank documents given a query. We have a query University of Amsterdam, and we have many, many documents. And we want to find documents that are most likely given this query. But uh, the query is short, usually. And the building the language model of a query is hard. It's much easier to build the language model of document because look, if we calculate this for a query, this will mostly be one over two or one over three. And for a document, this become quite valuable quantities. So we want to actually reverse. We want Q given D. Now, of course, we apply Bayes rule and that's what we get. We get just, just this by Bayes rule. And we notice that in the denominator, we have the probability of a query. Now, imagine we have a query University of Amsterdam and we rank many documents for this query. Now, the query is the same. Its probability is the same for all the documents and it doesn't affect ranking at all. So we can simply drop it uh, just because the query is the same and this quantity doesn't change. And this is how we write it. We say it's rank equivalent so this formula is rank equivalent to this or this to that. Uh, that means that if we rank documents according to this formula, the ranking will be exactly the same as if we rank them according to this formula. Now let's uh, have a closer look into here. Here we have now the component, the probability of a query, how likely the query is given the document and the prior probability of the document. So what could be a prior probability of a document? Usually if we have a, an on-campus lecture, we discuss this a little bit and uh, there are multiple suggestions. One suggestion is, for example, we can use a uniform distribution, meaning that all documents have exactly the same prior probability, which is reasonable. Another suggestion could be using something like page rank, because as I mentioned a little bit uh, earlier, page rank can represent the quality of a document if there is no query, it's just the quality based on incoming and outgoing links. And you can only use it in web search. You, you can't uh, apply page rank to, to standard documents, for example. Uh, so there are many cases, but in general, it's assumed that this probability distribution is uniform. But if it's uniform, again, it doesn't change the ranking. So uh, the, the, if we drop it, if we assume it to be uniform, then the probability of a document given a query is rank equivalent to the probability of a query given a document. And uh, now this we can compute actually, and this will what we call the query likelihood model because it's a likelihood of a query. And uh, that's the likelihood of a query given a model of a document. Now let's just compute this probability. Let's assume uh, again, the Unigram language models, terms are independent. Again, we have a query university of Amsterdam. All these three words are independent. So what will be the probability of a query, such a query of three words, given a document language model? Since words are independent, it's just the product of all the words in a query, the probability of a word in a document. And what is the probability of a word in a document? We saw that on the previous slide, it's just TF divided by the document length. So this is pretty much the query likelihood model. This is how you match the distribution of a document with the distribution of a query. So we represent them both as distributions and we match them in this way. And there is another more, let's say, more standard, more widespread method outside IR to match two distributions. And this is the Kulbach library divergence. So that you've probably seen before. Uh, this is. Um, yeah, this is just the full, full formula. Again, this we can compute as term frequency divided by the query length, term frequency divided by the document length. So that's another way to match two distributions. 
But in IR, as I said, we use query likelihood models more. And in your homeworks, for example, what you can do, you can implement to, you can run evaluation and see what works better for that particular collection. Now, I mentioned that um, the problem with this model is that if a term doesn't occur in the query or in the document, this probability is zero. And that, that's the problem, especially here. If at least one term doesn't occur in a document, then the whole QLM is zero. And that's an issue. And here as well, so if it's, this is zero, at least for one term, well, you just can't compute this. So what do we do with this smoothing? There are two uh, widespread methods. One is just a linear combination. It's called the uh, jelinek mercer smoothing. So we have the probability of a term in a document, but we also have the probability of the term in the whole collection so in all the documents, this can never be zero. If the term is not present in a collection, it cannot appear in a query, let's say. Well, at, least, at least that's the assumption. So the term should always occur in a collection and this is non-zero probability, then you combine in a certain way and you choose the constant based on validation set, for example. Uh, this is more specifically this formula you've seen and the probability of the term in a collection is just the collection frequency of the term divided by the collection length, as I said. And the more elaborate uh, smoothing method, which uh, may uh, remind you of some Bayesian statistics, because this is a really uh, Bayesian approach to smoothing, is to remember that now uh, a document is a multinomial distribution over words. More specifically, we can uh, write it like this, where n is term frequency for each particular word. So we have as many words as there is, um, well, should be b actually. Uh, yeah, should be the vocabulary size here. So n is the term frequency and p is the probability of a term in a document. So this is the multinomial distribution, the standard notation. Now, what is the conjugate prior uh, for a multinomial distribution? It's a Dirichlet distribution. It's a Dirichlet distribution with some prior parameters, which uh, could be set as follows. So these prior parameters can be based on the collection frequency of a word with some uh, tuning parameter. And, you know, that's just a smoothing parameter similar to lambda. So this is the relation between lambda and mu. Lambda is from the Jelinek Mercer. And if we have the multinomial distribution, we have a Dirichlet prior, then we get a posterior and the posterior, posterior will uh, be also Dirichlet distribution with new parameters, with new parameters alpha, and new parameters of posterior will be Ni plus alpha i. That's just based on uh, Bayesian statistics uh, conjugate priors. So you can check the theory if you like. But the new parameters of the posterior Dirichlet distribution will be this, which is this in terms of term frequencies and collection frequencies. And finally, the probability, the posterior probability of a term. So the prior probability of a term was, was a term frequency divided by document length. Then the, the parameter of the prior distribution was this, the posterior uh, parameter of the posterior probability is this. If you just compute it, you will get this formula. So this is called Dirichlet smoothing. Again, we have, just as with the Jelinek Mercer, we have the actual term frequency of a word in a document. We have the collection frequency of a word in a whole collection, and we have the document length. So, and actually, if you sum together, that will be one uh, summation. So, to summarize, a different approach to document representation and matching. Now documents and queries are represented as distributions and they can be matched using query likelihood model or kubok lightweight divergence. And to solve the problem of zero probabilities, we either use Jelinek versus smoothing or Dirichlet smoothing. And again, well, uh, in your assignment, you can try both and see which works best just out of curiosity. <laughs>